So we're going to create our functions. And first, we're going to define our GraphQL function and handler. It's going to be functions GraphQL handler. So let's first create our use, use, user space here. And we're going to move a few things around here. We're going to rename this to GraphQL. And we're going to change this for handler. And let's ignore all this part for a second. And let's first focus on our GraphQL implementation. We want to create our GraphQL folder. So we're going to put it at the first level. And we're going to define our schema. First, we need to require our GraphQL schema. Um, <coughs> so we can say that our Druid schema is going to be a GraphQL object type. And then we're going to give this name in our fields. Okay, let's talk about how we're going to build here. Um, here we're going to build a user a user query that will allow us to, to query the uh, a user from a database. And let's imagine that we have some kind of order system. We also need to query which um, order have that user <coughs> field. And so in order to do that, we just need to define our user schema. And we are going to get this by email. So the type of this one is going to be graph QL not null. And this is going to be a graph QL. Okay. So our result function is going to be we're going to create the email from that only. And we're going to return like get users per order. And we're going to pass the email. Okay, so let's add our dependencies. Okay, this and also this one. And finally we are going to return our schemas. So that export is going to be schema that we have anywhere. New GraphQL schema. And we're not, since we're not going to use any mutation here, that is good enough. Okay, so save this, we're done with the schema. And um, what else is missing? We need to require this. And this we're going to create a helper functions. And also, we need to import our user type. Let's put some space in here. <coughs> so yeah, that's it for the look. Okay, so let's create our types. We're going to let's oops, okay. So for create our type first, we're going to define our find our user type. And this is going to be something like this in the graph QL object. It's going to have a name, and our fields are going to be the ID, it's going to be the email, it's going to be the name, it's going to be the last name, as well as the orders. So let's add some types to this. So I think this is our, this cannot be null, GraphQL, null, and this is going to be our GraphQL ID as well. I'm going to put it here. And rest into our graph new GraphQL GraphQL strings. Mm, what else I'm missing here? Okay, our orders have to be a different type. It's going to be a new graph QL list. So this is going to be a collection, a collection of items. So it's going to be our order. So we need to define our orders. I wonder why standard is not working here. <coughs> okay, we're going to figure it out later. Um, so new which is again is going to be a GraphQL type with name order and our fields in here is going to be the ID, the create add, and also the comment, a comment for um, ID. So this is going to be pretty similar to this. Our ID is going to be our non null type and these two are going to be streams. So that is good enough. So let's import everything that we need in order to make this work or require the graph QL. We're going to use the null. 
the object type the <coughs> ID and the list. Okay, this is this looks pretty good to me, and we don't forget to oh, model the pet port to the user. Okay, this should be good enough. Let's save this part. Um, we have our our schema. We have our types. So let's now define our user per order function that is going to be in our helpers. Let's first create on GraphQL a helper type. Yes, we're going to use a strip strip mode. And let's see, let's see how this is going to work. So first we're going to work uh, go grab or grab the able to take advantage of the generators. And we know that this is going to use um, our schema. It's going to pass our email, so that's the information we have available to make our query. So since we're going to make uh, a sync operation to another AWS service, it's always good to cache the errors and login them <coughs> for us to debug later in case that something wrong happen. So in our grab console, let's first now that we are in it, uh, ops and dynamo db, and this is going to look like this. Um, first, we need to get our user and our orders, and they are going to be two different tables. And we can, since they're going to be different, and we are going to query both by by the email parameter, we can do it at the, at the same time. There is no need to do it independent. So let's define our dynamo db as our get for the for the user. So we are going to pass the user params in here, and it's going to return a promise. For the new, it's going to be quite similar to to the <coughs> orders param. But since we're going to look for a collection of orders, we're going to use the scans. Even though you should avoid using a scan um, every time that you can, because it's a very expensive uh, operation, it's going to kill you on your wallet as well. So, but for for this case, it's okay to use it. In a future video, I will explain how to use a more efficient dynamic like, in order for you to be able to do really good queries and not get caught in, in the process. So let's first assign, define how our user params is going to look like. This is called our user param, king, double name, table name, let's define later. And then we're going to say that the key that we're going to for is our email. And let's then define our order param. And it's quite similar, I think, but this is going to be the table for the orders. And we are going to use the filter expression. We want to say that the email and it's going to be the email and the expression attribute values is going to be the one. We're going to say that, okay, that the email is going to be the email that we use. Get it? This should be good enough for us to query our database. Let's name, make sure that I don't make any typo here. Attribute value. Okay, that should be okay. So once we get our query, we are, let's put prod from Dynamo. And lastly, we need to assemble our user in the same shape of the schema that we defined before. So let's create a user here. We're going to say that our user, that item, and also remember that we have an order property that is going to be equal to the order that items that we got from the collection here. And lastly, we're going to return our user by schema. So what we have to do now, we have to define our DynamoDB and our table environments. So first let's go for the table environments. So our table orders and our table users are going to be environment and environment variables that we're going to define later. Table orders and same here. Process at end that table users. And for the dynamo, um, let's say that we need to require perfect. AWS SDK, and then we're going to say that our configuration is going to be US is one, <coughs> and our Dynamo implementation is going to be a new AWS type DynamoDB that we apply. Okay, and we need to import our code library as well. Okay, so that should be it. Let's make sure that we can make mistakes here, items. <coughs> Sorry for this, I'm not feeling well at all. So, um, so that's it. So now let's go to our GraphQL implementation. <coughs> that's how we're going to define it. And we're going to first get a query that we're going to read from the body. And we're going to return our GraphQL schema that we're going to import. And we're going to pass our query. Then we're going to get the rest. 
we want to set up the callback. It's going to be null or otherwise that is code <coughs> 200 and body JSON that strings by the response. Or we're going to get the error. Okay, our application seems to be completed. So let's define all the permission that we need in order to make this work. So in order to do that, let's go to our serverless and YAML and let's make sure that we have everything fine. So our trigger for this um, API is going to be the HTTP um, we're going to define. It's going to be a GraphQL endpoint that is going through AP Gateway service of the AWS, and the method is going to be the pause. Um, the environment is going to specify environment to set up the table orders that we define, and also the table user. Let me make sure that I don't make a make any big, big typo here. So let me go to the helpers and the table orders and the tables users. <coughs> and this is going to be the name of our tables. And but before we define that, we need to set some custom variables in here. So let's say that the stage that we are in is going to be in our option stage or otherwise the cell provider stage. So this is for us to be able to have a kind of a dead database name and also our prod db name in case that we decide to ship this to, to production have a different environment, environment for both of them. So this is a neat tweet that we need to that we can use in order to make this work. So stage is going to be orders and the similar is going to be users. And also we need to specify the permissions that we are going to use. We need two permissions in here. Statements. We need, to, we need two permissions in here. One is for the get item that we are executing here for this function and also one for the scan function. So there are two different that we need to request. So first we're going to create a it's going to be allow the action. We're going to ask for dynamo db get item. And the resource that we're going to feed is the R and then AWS DB. AWS region. <coughs> is going to be on the users, our users table. And very, very, very similar is going to be the scan. So let's copy and paste that. This is going to be a scan. And this is going to be for our orders instead of our users table. So lastly, we need to define the APIs that we're going to use for resources in here. So let's first define our order table. Order table is going to be the type. It's going to be like AWS DynamoDB table. Oh, so this is capital T. And properties, properties, our table name. Is going to be we specify it here. And the attributes, attributes, definitions. We're going to get uh, two default attributes in here: attributes, um, name, our ID, and this is going to be a type of string. And also, we're going to have. Uh, <coughs> no, I think that the attribute is good enough for this. And our key schema, our primary key for this is going to be our ID. And we are not using any sort key for the bottom of this table. And our provision, we need to put our provision attribute in here. We put our read capacity unit. It's going to be one, we don't need more than this. And write capacity units is also going to be one. <coughs> and this is our orders table. So let's define now our users table with this, which is going to be quite similar to this as well. But the name is going to be users table. And <coughs> it's going to be users. The difference here is that since our requirement for the schema is using the email, and we want to use a, a get a <coughs> item of operation instead of a scan, our ID cannot be our our primary key, otherwise we will need also the ID in order to make this work. So for, for the moment, this is this is gonna fail. 
uh, where purpose. But in real life, you should have kind of an, an ID and also use the, the you know, as a sort key and ensure that your user will have to pass you a user object so you have access to the ID and the email as well. And I think this should be good enough. So let's see how this goes. Let me, let's, let's deploy. Okay, I realized that I wasn't making a mistake and let me show you if you're following along on the GraphQL, I totally forgot to import the GraphQL and the schema. So after that, you can just can deploy it and it will work just fine. So let's make sure that everything is correct. Let's go to the AWS console. And first let's realize that we're gonna realize that the database were created, that they should be empty at this point. Nothing to see here, nothing to see here. And our Cloud Foundation template is created. And lastly, our serverless graph QL function should be here and everything should be working just fine. So we have uh, our DynamoDB, our Cloud, CloudWatch logs and our API gateway. So everything should be should be working fine. So let's see, let's test our 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 query. So first we're going to use our schema, the going to be a user with an email. Right now it's empty, but it's okay. So let's first make sure that everything is working fine. And we're just going to have an ID, an email, a name, and our last name maybe. And also our orders is going to have an ID comment and uh, created a uh, property as we find and we need an endpoint so if you're going to uh, after you deploy your serverless project you will get this endpoint down here so you just can copy and paste it in here and after this after you try to do this you will find this weird er error that's syntax error respective phone query id but and um, that is just wrong i mean let's go let's go to another another source let's go to our postman and let's change it for post and we are just going to go to our body and our draw. We're going to say that get me the user with the email and the uh, maybe your uh, fog. And we're going to say one day email right now just to prove that everything is working fine. And right now, if we do this, it's kind of working here. It's okay that it's return all because we we have our our database empty. But why is it working on on the postman and it's not working our in our GraphQL client? So let's solve this issue first. And the problem is basically that when we're when we require this information in here, it will try to parse it. And this is this add an extra query query pro property. And remember that this is trying to do something here that we are not specifying the kind of data that we're parsing. So that is kind of where the problem comes from. So in order for us to solve this, we need to first validate this payload. So let's make a function that takes care of that. So we just can define it out here. <clears throat> so let's go to the event. And we are going to say a try cache here because it's going to try to parse um, this object. And if it's not a valid JSON, it's okay. So this is the Postman case. And lastly, we are going to say what is going to happen here. So I just don't want to be bored and see it. So I just already made for you. Okay, what is going to happen here is that first it's going to try to parse the event object. And if it's not a valid JSON, it's going to return it as it is. So this is, will be the Postman case. Otherwise, if can parse it, um, we're going to look for the for a query pr property, and we are going to get the query and replace it with blank spaces and, and space with it, and this should work just fine. So after this, that uh, you just can deploy your project again. So let's do that, and it's going to take some time. So I'm going to pause the video. Okay, so it's already deployed. So if we come back, I already check it, and you can see that we can use it in the same state in here and in, in our Postman. So that will be totally up to you with and your and your requirements if you wanted to use a Postman as well and on your GraphQL client. So, okay, so everything seems to be working right now. So, but the thing is that we need some data in order to make this work. So I'm just going to create some script that we allow to make use of some data. And this is it. Basically, we are going to fill our database with two, with two users and they were going to Plus um, 10 different orders that will be assigned to each one of these users. And lastly, we are going to put that on Dynamo. Let's see how that looks like. So if we can just come here and the see that yes. So everything seems to be working fine. Let's make sure that everything is working as expected. If we come for orders, we see that our database has been seeded with some dummy data around. And also our users table has two different users, one is Andres and the other one is Lele. So let's see if our query are working as expected. Let's first test on Postman. If we select this, we notice that, yeah, it is working fine. So let's go to our GraphQL client and make sure that everything working as expected. And we also have some ID, if I remember well, in our orders. Now that we have them, they should work our comments and our created uh, 
feel. Let's see if everything's working fine. Yes, it is. Oh my fucking god, this looks really, really, really cool. And lastly, let's check our other users at gmail.com. And it is working as well. So, so okay.